Waiting for this light to turn green. I'm headed to work for a boss so mean. I'm gonna be late. She's gonna be. There are some things we should do alone, like sing in your car. If this light doesn't turn, I'm gonna scream. But when you gamble, you should always do it with others, because gambling with friends helps keep things in check. So go to keepitfunohio.com for more tips like this. Keep it fun. Keep it social. But your singing. Maybe keep that to yourself. Introducing Under Armour's Infinity High Sports Bra. Its ergonomic design is molded to support the natural movement of your body. With cord out padding, the better breathability eliminates extra bulk without sacrificing support. And quick dry padding is Under Armour's fastest drying padding yet. When you're lifting heavy, running fast, and pushing yourself further than ever before, you need a bra that will help you go that extra mile and make you feel your best. Shop the Infinity High Sports Bra now at UA.com. This podcast is a member of the Voices of Wrestling podcasting network. Visit VoicesOfWrestling.com to hear the rest of our great podcasts as well as show reviews, columns, opinions, and updates across the world of wrestling. Hello everybody and welcome to the Super J Cast. I'm Joel, joined by David McDonald. It is Tuesday the 7th of June. This is episode 213. Uh, how's it going, David? Great. We are uh, fantastic over here on this side of the world. Uh, the summer months are here. It's not a cloud in the sky today. And uh, everyone's thrilled with the pro wrestling world. <laughs> there's no issues, right? Right, Tony. There's no issues. Everything's smooth sailing. Uh, we have uh, uh, we have a dream matchup in Chicago, right? That's right around the corner. Uh, right, that didn't get canceled, did it, Joe? <laughs> no, no. Everything is exactly how we wanted it. Cheering's <laughs> back. Yeah. Desperado is best of the Super Juniors. <laughs> Zest friends are tearing it up together. Best yeah. buddies out there in the world. Love and life. Yeah, it's amazing how uh, once you take the pot off the oven, off the top stove, off the flame, it kind of cools a little bit. Ah, uh, what are you gonna do? It's it's. Uh, we'll get there eventually. <laughs> well, we we sure shall. Now nah, we're good. You're good. You're you're. Uh, you got to be uh, excited because uh, I, I think we can disclose you're uh, you're finally getting back. You're finally going home. The Joel is going home. Yeah, not permanently. It's just for my summer holiday. So I'll be back in the UK from July 1st to August the 3rd. And so we're just discussing on Thursday. You know, will I? Because we'll be staying for the most part with my parents who have a pretty small house. I was just thinking the practicalities of me doing a podcast with all the people in that house. Mm. Um, but then I've, I've said to Damon, if the G1 lineup is good <laughs> and cheering is allowed, then I still are reserving the right to, to still do it. But uh, we'll see. If it's if, if the lineups come out and it's like, Takahashi Yujiro, and we're still doing the clap crowds, then <laughs> fuck enjoy, that noise. <laughs> enjoy your four weeks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'll be with you. Come to think of it. I'll hop, hop on a fucking plane and go come with you. Um yeah, so but I mean, listen, we'll be able to, to hold down the fort, mind you. I don't want you to feel obligated, but um, yeah, come on, four weeks, you're going to kill me. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, and especially if if the if the cheering is back, which it won't be, because every single time we thought it's going to be back, it hasn't. But uh, um, I, there's no way I'm missing that episode. Yeah, no way. Yeah, that's going to be fun. I mean, it, it, if anything, what this has done is is has given us a new newfound appreciation for. Uh, anticipation, hasn't it? It's like we're it's edging. edging. They're edging us. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. This is this is the sexual equivalent or the uh, pro wrestling equivalent of edging. Yes, it's exactly what's happening. Um, but it will be here. It will be here. I mean, we we are we have been promised, and um, I don't know this this could line up to be a pretty decent G one. Hopefully, fingers crossed. Nobody knows yet, but. I think we're all we're all pretty excited about the possibility. So let's just kind of let's just kind of stay in that court, stay in the positive side of life. The, the, the glass is half full. Yeah, I must say, Damon, I do wish they hadn't 
been teasing us like that throughout the tour. And it was more than one person. It was like, a, I think Kidani would mention the Budokan show as well. So we're going through this whole best of the super juniors thinking, rightly so, we've been clearly given the impression that by the time the finals had rolled around, cheering would be allowed again. And it wasn't, and I don't know if there was some sort of setback. And obviously it was out of their hands, but if they just shut the fuck up and not be <laughs> teasing it the whole tour. And, you know, after that, the final block night, all the wrestlers started tweeting that, yeah, cheering's going to be allowed something obviously happened there, but it was really, really frustrating, wasn't it? It is. And and then again, I can't, I'm not going to sit here and try to make sense of uh, any government's rules at this point, because it just seems uh, every day is a new twist and turn. But I mean, I, I, I've watched Japanese baseball games and there seems to be no problem with cheering there. Um, I mean, again, in some cases they're outdoors. All right, I understand. Uh, but it seems all right, like- well, let's just move all the New Japan shows to Ganyujima Island then, and <laughs> yeah, the problem solved. Right, that'd be, that's, that'd be actually pretty good. Uh, I don't know. I, I mean, again, I don't think they're sitting there with the you know let let's fuck over pro wrestling. I don't think that's happening. But um, for whatever reason, it's it does seem. Yeah, there were what four. Or at least three that I know of that had it, at, at least mentioned it via the social media platforms of your choice. Yeah, that was disappointing. I don't know. I don't, I was, I was disappointed because I really thought it was going to happen. Um, with that being said, I'm, I'm, I was going to say, I'm kind of glad they didn't with that show because what the fuck were you cheering for? <laughs> right? Are you telling me that people would not have been out of their seats screaming at the top of their voices for Tom Rocky Homer versus Ryohei Oiwa? <laughs> Maybe not. And the plethora of six man tags. Um But but I was I I held back on that statement, Joel, because uh guess what? That doesn't sound like that Dominion cards are that much better. <laughs> be truthful um so uh you know listen maybe they can maybe they'll use that dominion show as like a test right because you know there's not gonna be that much excitement (laughs) so when it does happen they'll be they'll be able to contain it they'll be able to contain anything that might go bad uh at the dominion show i don't know man doc gallows against toriano that is (laughs) Really going to push people to their limits of obeying these rules. Oh my god! I know people are just going to people like they like, like they threw cushions at Sumo Hall and G One. They're going to be ripping off their masks. Like, we can't take it anymore. How can you expect us to contain our excitement? Doc Gallows and Yano. Oh, I'm at, you know, I, I'm going to be truthful. Not in my worst nightmare have I, did I ever think we would see a Yano Doc Gallows singles match, uh, but. <laughs> I mean, that, that, that is the chickens coming home to roost for yeah. Good Brothers being back immediately. Like record any percent speed run, making us deeply regret that they're back in Japan. Booking the worst possible match off the of bat. Unbelievable. Oh my god. Yeah, that's uh, I I don't think I'm looking forward to that. I don't think I'm circling that one. That whole car oh, I again I'm sure we're talking about it. I know we're all over the map in the beginning, but there's a lot to get to, but yeah, I mean, if they're going to cheer, I don't, I don't, like I said, the 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 finals match, yes, I could see absolutely, and I think you know if we're looking at Dominion, there are matches where they they could lose their shit, but overall, I, I got to be honest with you, these these shows are one is not sexy on paper, the other one is was was not sexy on paper and was kind of. You got what you thought <laughs> when looking at the lineup. Well, we're going to be bouncing around through the news topics first. Uh, let's start with Forbidden Door then. So Derek says, any hope Forbidden Door doesn't just become Forgotten Door? What is going on with the show besides the one match that isn't happening? Is there any card for this yet? Uh, Andrew says, how can Ghetto control Tony Khan's excesses and stop Forbidden Door from going seven hours long? Should House of Torture be ready to go and stop any matches where terrible wrestlers like Adam Cole have been wrestling for far too long? I don't know if you ever, we followed WWE back in the day where they had that three minute warning gimmick with Rosie and Jamal, when the matches were going too long, they come out and start beating everyone up. So they just have House of Torture ready to go. If any matches get too long in the tooth, 
then uh, just just send the boys out there. Um, I mean, I it it is weird that we've got nothing announced yet. And but to be honest, I think most of that is probably down on New Japan because they don't like to reveal matches until they have set up the angles leading to those matches. So I wouldn't leave that squarely at AEW's door. But I don't know. Does it feel weird to you that <laughs> we've got literally nothing for that show so far? It does. I mean, we have possibilities of matchups. You know, you know. But at this point, we know there's going to be, you know, two matches to the to determine winner, or actually three. There's a battle royal thrown in there for good measure. Um, I mean, they kind of got fucked, right? They kind of the worst luck. Because truth be told, I was really excited by the the idea of a Tanahashi CM Punk match. I'm not gonna lie, I was really. I even tweeted you. I was like, "Holy shit, yeah. this is this is pants down material." And yeah, uh, perfect opponent for Punk because you know Punk, I thought so. He, he's he's not a young man anymore. He's obviously not as athletic as he was, and even in his prime, he wasn't the most sort of smooth athletic wrestler. Uh, he's a guy who I think now you, you want to sort of focus on his brawling and his grappling and I think Tanahashi would have been the perfect opponent to lay out that match showcase his strengths hide his weaknesses and yeah it's not happening yet I will say Tanahashi has invited CM Punk to face him at Wrestle Kingdom so I imagine the plan was that Punk would win at Forbidden Door and then Tanahashi would win a rematch at Wrestle Kingdom so I'm sure we will get the match at some point but it would have been a really sexy main event for a Chicago crowd at least yep it, it really would have uh, um, t- to say the least, I was disappointed knowing that uh, I would have been there and enjoyed that thoroughly. Um, and then, you know, come to find out that there's other injuries to other talent that also could handcuff them in making matches. And again, New Japan's, and we're talking about uh, Brian Danielson. Uh, it's... You know, they're not going to reveal matches beforehand right? because they do like to have the angles play out. And we're talking about New Japan here. So I don't think that I, – I, I hate to say this. I don't even know if they know what they want the fuck to do <laughs> at this show at this point. I really don't. I, I have no confidence that anything is planned out between the, t- the two organizations. Now I can no, be dead wrong. If, if reports and rumors are to be believed, that even Dynamite is, uh, to some extent, booked on the fly. So yeah, <laughs> expecting both companies to have their house in order with all those variables this far in advance. Probably we're expecting too much. I mean, we'll we'll see Tanahashi. What do you think, Tanahashi marks? Uh, no, no, I'm all in on Samurai Dad Hiroki Goto <laughs> main event in <laughs> the first cross promotional pay per view. I I'm. We've got a manifest into existence, Damon. Nothing would give me more pleasure. In spite of the fact our good friend Dave Meltzer going through all the people he'd rather see wrestle Tanahashi than Goto, even Tamatonga, <laughs> he says. Really? So people are down on Goto. I mean, of course, we'll talk about this later, but I, it, it's got to happen. I've never wanted anything as much as I do Hiroki Goto in this main event and winning the AW title. It's got to happen. I need it. Well, you're. You, I, I, I'm going to tell you right now that the likelihood of e- any of those two things occurring are slim and none, and uh, none's walking out the door. Um, I, 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 I would be shocked. It would be, it would be the ultimate, the ultimate. What the fuck is going on with this company? But yes, I don't think, uh, I don't think we'll see that. But wow, Dave shitting on Goto. Here's the thing. Goto's not terrible. He's not bad. He's just, you know, he's one of those guys that never wins, number one. Um, and two, you know, he's kind of just fucking sitting around on a mid card. Like, when was the last time he had a... <laughs> uh, he's been doing the tag title stuff. Right. Um, but do you... I don't know. It, this is not the case, but it feels like them just sort of casually throwing Goto into that title eliminator because he's got nothing else to do is sort of a backhanded insult towards what they think of the AEW title. Ah, oh, just throw Goto in there. Yeah. Meltzer's like, oh, it should have been Osprey. It should have been someone. But no, they've got Osprey tied up in their own programs. They've got no interest in doing that. They just picked a, a mid-card guy that had nothing to do at Dominion and just threw him in there to fill the gap. It that's does what they the think way. of AEW. Yeah, it does. It does. They, they think it's the fucking Ring of Honor TV title. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, you know what? That is a that is a valid point in the sense of yeah, they're just chucking in a guy that that again big 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 matches always loses always loses. Um, yeah, that that does say something. That does say something about that. But who knows? I mean, look, every time you think you're taking two steps forward, we wind up taking three steps backwards. Um, we'll see. <laughs> That's the best I can say at this point. We'll see. Uh, I, I'm sure every – listen, they have a 17,000-seat arena filled to the rafters. Uh, they can't fuck this up. They can't treat this like this is a a uh, you know a row two show. They just can't, uh, and I just feel like they don't like just recognize what we have in front of us here. Like recognize what what ha- what what this company has accomplished with the help of AEW, um, uh, and again maybe vice versa, but. We this is a golden. You have a golden ticket. You have a golden ticket. Let's. You can't walk out of here. Like seriously, if 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 that main event is Tanahashi versus Mox, are you disappointed? No, I think that'd be really? great. I've been looking forward to that match for a while. I gotta be honest with you. I'd be disappointed. I'd be huh. disappointed. I would. So be. what disappointed? The, the lack of star power on. What, the end of both companies? You know what I want? Not the lack of star power. It's just the lack of stylistically what the match will be. Right? Because I kind of mm. have my heart set on a an epic match to close out the show. Well, we could still get the winner of Jay White and Okada defending against uh, an AEW guy. You think that would be the main event? People are holding out hope for Okara against Brian Danielson. I know Danielson's going to be injured. He's out for one one to two weeks, apparently. So it's not a serious long-term injury. Oh, okay. So I thought it was more serious than that. I thought it was more serious than that. Okay. Well, that well, that sheds some new light on things then. Because they could... Yeah, I mean, seriously. If they put Okada and him on top, I would be more than thrilled. I would be ecstatic. Uh, no doubt. I would I be fine. I would take Okada against uh, Adam Page. I like Hangman Page. I don't like him as much as most AW fans do, but I think him against Okada would be a very fun match. I I would agree if I had a choice. And if you had a choice, who are you picking? Oh, uh, Danielson right. all the way. Right. Right. All right. So then now all we had to do is all collectively channel our karma and energy and prayer. <laughs> For his speedy recovery. For Hiroki Goto to pull through <laughs> against the Odyssey. <laughs> oh, my Lord. Hiroki Goto. Imagine that. Well, look. All right. I mean, and then aside from that, you got Will. What the, what the, I don't know what the fuck they're going to do. I don't know. No, we'll, we'll have to wait until after Dominion. After Dominion, I think things will be a lot clearer. So uh, we agree. will wait and see. Um, here we go. Here's another topic for you. Andrew also asks, will any match on Forbidden Door be as good as Glitter getting House of Torture versus Strongheart? Mm-hmm. So you may have seen, Damon, that House of Torture will be invading Glate, and we're going to see them locking horns with Stronghearts. Uh, I mean, people are turning their nose up at this. I think that should, should be a lot of fun, actually. I think maybe we may see the end game of a Stronghearts team challenging House of Torture for those never six-man titles, which, Ooh. you know, you just put that in a Coraquin Hall, once the cheering band's been lifted, I thought that'd be tremendous. So I actually, I'm going to uh, dip my toes into Glator to see how this House of Torture thing plays out. Are you with me? I am with you in the sense of the idea of a never six-man title defense. A little strong hearts action. I would, do, I would be fucking down for that. Um, and... To to get there, them being on the show is fine, and I, you know, I, truth to be told, I, I it's, it's not that pressing of a thing for me. Like if there was interference on a Gleet show, Gleet show, whatever, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm okay. But 
the idea of of a of a, of a six man title defense somewhere again, Corkin, uh, a road two show main eventing. I think that's that sounds pretty intriguing to me. I love I love it. We also got some news yesterday that on November twentieth there will be a New Japan and Stardom crossover pay per view event at the Ariake Arena, All right. which is about fifteen k that venue. That's How good. are we feeling about this? Finally, people are getting the New Japan Women's Division that they, that they wanted. <laughs> we don't never have to hear it again, right? Um, that's I think it's fine. That's listen, you know, you know, not for nothing. They worked with Noah, <laughs> you know? right? You know, not why not? The um, but and I do, I do love the fact that New Japan run cross promotional events with Noah. And Glate and AW before, <laughs> way before doing anything with Stardom. Right. That is another old fucking comment. That is that is pretty laughable. Um, I think it's a good idea. Why not? I mean, at this point in time, they're they're, they're everybody's trying to make a buck. Everybody's trying to make a it makes some money. And if and if that's an, an avenue toward that, I don't I don't think it's a bad idea. And here's the thing: Stardom's, it, you know there's enough people that are interested in it and the product is good enough to, to have a joint show. I don't, I don't think anybody would, would, I don't think anybody would hand wave that. Like nobody's hand waving that. Are they Joel? No, absolutely not. I mean, this, I think could be a gateway for a lot of people who who like me, basically who are like hear good things about stardom, but never actually decide to pull the trigger and start watching it. If you're watching it as part of a cross promotional show, you might may make may make such a great impression that you think, oh, you know what, I'm going to check out the next show, and obviously that's going to be the intention there. So they will we'll put their best foot forward, I'm sure. What what would be the problem in an annual event? What would be your problem with an annual event? If we if 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 we own the, the company, then why not? Let's do it. And and, it's, and you're exactly right. If it puts more eyeballs eyeballs on that product. And it and it lets them make more money, and as well as New Japan, then fine. Who I don't care if they work with fucking whomever. I don't care that that's. I mean, if, if if people are interested in it and people will watch and buy tickets, then at the end of the day, that's all that fucking matters. Like it's not going to hurt either of them. It's 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 fine. I'm I'm totally down for that. Last bit of news here is more on the Kota Ibushi saga. So since we last spoke, there was a big press conference with, uh, who was it, Kidani and Obari, if I'm remembering this correctly, and they apologised for everything that had been going on, and they announced that there would be punishments for everyone. Ibushi would get a three-month 10% salary reduction, so would Obari, and so would the official, as we refer to him now. Oh, no, which really? really funny. He's they the just official? kept calling him the official. Yeah. No more uh, so he's no. no, no, he is the official. Okay. So the, the nameless official will be moved to a different position, you oh. know, doing the old sort of Japanese workplace thing of uh, de- uh, well, demoting them, <laughs> moving them to a different office until, uh, well, either way, I saw that conference and I thought, okay, that's the end of it. They've apologized. I wasn't expecting them to do that. I was uh, quite surprised. And I thought, okay, well, we're all good. Ibushi's going to come back. They said he's going to come back when he's fit and healthy. Then Ibushi logged into uh, Twitter.com and (laughs) started firing off tweets. And he obviously was still unhappy. He feels that they haven't told the full truth. They've said, oh, well, we, we can do a press conference with Ibushi. I don't believe them. I don't think they want him anywhere near alive. My the impression I'm getting is he has got no interest in wrestling for New Japan anymore. He's still pissed off, and they just want to keep him quiet because he seems to know some stuff that they would information that they would rather not get out there. So it just seems like a case of doing their very best to try and get him to shut up until his contract runs out and he can go and do something else. What that something else is, I have no idea. I don't know which companies would want to work with him at this point or which companies he would want to work for because I don't think he is interested in moving to America and well, there's a lot of baggage that comes with Kota Ibushi now so to cut the long story short I will be very surprised if we see him wrestle for New Japan again yeah I, I like I said I didn't think it was possible I mean um, what is his end game with this though like what 
like, what does he want New Japan to do? Like, they've they've his, apologized publicly. Okay, well, I'll tell you what it's not. It, it, it is not a workers' right crusade, as some people on Twitter seems to think it is. It's not that. He's still pissed off about his mother, and, you know, that's completely understandable. We talked about that last time we recorded. I think he still feels that he has not received the, the restitution, the reparation that he feels is... Or maybe he just feels that everything they did was unforgivable. Maybe he just he can't let that go, which you know that's that's his prerogative. It is. It absolutely is, and it is a it is a terribly sad story. But like like, is he looking for financial compensation? Is he looking for a a, a meeting where they they profusely apologize in private? Are they like what like what is his end game with this? Like they apologized. Um, you can believe the sincerity degree to whatever you want to agree with, but like what? Now, so, okay, like what does he want to have happen? Does he want New Japan to say, "Yep, we've been have we had shitty business practices and and you know we treat wrestlers probably not the best." And I, I like like and and here's the thing too, like I I don't want to shock anybody, but. I mean, and and the world is open for change, as we've seen in the past at least five years. Um, like, what what is the end game? What do, what do, what do we want to have happen here? I don't know. And yeah, I think the the idea of him stepping in a new Japan ring anytime soon is, uh, to say the least, it's you probably have more more luck. Uh, and more chance having Hiroki Goto stand in the middle of the fucking United Center holding up the AEW title. Let's put it that way. Well, if that hasn't whet your appetites, then maybe some delicious ideas from our friends over at HelloFresh will do the job, Damon. I Talk hear, to us. I hear about... what you're getting at. Listen to HelloFresh, and you know I've been a huge fan of HelloFresh and I continue to be. Because here in the States, you can get farm fresh pre portioned ingredients, seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. And that's with who? That's with HelloFresh. You're going to skip the trips to the grocery store? Count on HelloFresh to make some home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. And that's why it's America's number one meal kit. Look, HelloFresh, they deliver those pre portioned ingredients straight to your door. It's including farm fresh produce that arrives within a week. That's pretty good. So you get convenience without skimping, no skimping on quality, not with HelloFresh. Skip the trip to the grocery store, saving you uh, the wait in long lines. Nobody wants that. And ensuring you don't waste money on excess food. Look, Here's the deal. You know it already. I've said it a million times, right? What I want you to do is this. Go to HelloFresh.com slash VOW16. You want to use the code VOW16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. I'm telling you, it's well worth it. Once again, go to HelloFresh.com slash VOW16. Use the code VOW16 up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. We're talking delicious recipes, easy instructions, uh, and dare I say, fun and smart and pre-portioned. You'll love it. Trust me on that one. Damon approved. Once again, HelloFresh.com slash VOW16. Use the code VOW16. Do it now. Do it right now. And uh, get up to 16 free meals and Three free gifts from your good friends and ours. Hello, Fresh. All right, let's talk about the best of the Super Juniors 29 final. That was last Friday, June the 3rd in the Nippon Budokan. I don't think there's a great deal to talk about with each match, so I'm not going to do that because largely they were just setting up stuff for Dominion. I will say the first thing that I thought... Well, it was a breezy show, actually. I thought it was very... It was fun to watch. I mean, there was... Apart from the main event, there's nothing really that's going to be touching your, your match of the year list. But it, all the matches are really breezy. I mean, four minutes, six minutes, six minutes, four minutes, eight minutes, nine minutes, eight minutes. They were all really quick. It was a very easy watch. Quick and meaningless. Inter- yeah, you know <laughs> well, what I mean? I'm, yes. I've tried to pick out the points that I think were meaningful. And I got nothing until <laughs> the, the fifth match, 
which we saw the six-man tag Bullet Club against United Empire, and we saw El Fantasma, with a bit of help, pinning Aaron Hanare, which I think is intentional. When you have someone like ELP pinning a heavyweight in the form of Hanare, regardless of what you think about Hanare's status in the company, that does seem intentional and signifying ELP as a player in the heavyweight division. Do you think... Based on this and based on the, all the stuff we've seen in Best of the Super Juniors, we'll be seeing El Fantasma in the Grade 1 Climax. I know I was asked this months ago, or at least weeks ago, uh, and I kind of, not kind of, I, I, I did squash it. I was like, no, I can't see that happening. Too many oars in the water, blah, 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 blah. How, many, how are you going to squeeze them in, blah, 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 blah. But every week, there's little, little drips, little drabs, little bits, little, you know, that kind of all point to him making an appearance. Now, I don't know how you can. Um... So if we're looking at it from like, okay, a junior graduating to make it into the G1, because it doesn't happen every day, right? That a junior gets into a, to the G1. It has happened before, obviously, but it doesn't happen all the time. Um usually it's the top junior, right? Like if, so ELP, again, looking at it from a pro wrestling fan perspective, is he the top junior to make that transition? Well, I think if we're ranking the performers in this year's best of the super juniors, he's the heaviest. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I might say that he, he was my favorite my favourite guy to watch. I think if we're talking for two MVPs, it's him and it's Robbie. Robbie, yeah. But I don't think we're going to be putting Robbie Eagles in the grade one climax. So I thought ELP had a fantastic tournament. He was one of the best guys. I think if we're looking at guys who have increased their stock the most during this tournament, it's got to be him. I would agree. I I would agree with that. Um, But again, like, would, would, Logic aside, wouldn't somebody in the, in the finals be the one to make it? Like, like what gives? I agree. Yeah, this this is not like 2019 when we were putting Shingo and Osprey. Right, it? right. I mean, that's that's kind of what I'm getting at here. Is that okay? It just doesn't make much sense. And and again, I'm sure they'll find some fucking convoluted way to make it work. But um, does he? Do I have a problem with him being in it? None whatsoever. Because again, he he's he is. A, a heavyweight. He will be a heavyweight. I, I cannot see him staying as a junior. Um, I, I got to be honest with you, though. And again, I don't have a problem with ELP in it. And 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 nothing is definite. There's no pastrami sandwiches, so it's just our speculation. But I would rather have El Desperado in there. Oh, no, I don't agree. I think no? this be no. I still see him as a junior. I don't. But he wrestles everywhere else as not a junior. Yeah, no, I'd never considered that. Maybe, maybe the result of this best of super juniors final could be unexpectedly a way to get him over to the heavyweights. You know now that you saying? mentioned it, I don't think it's going to happen. I, I think he's too valuable in the junior division. And you know, this is something we'll talk about later, but eventually at some point in this Bullet Club story, we're going to need some people going the other way because we haven't had it yet. We haven't had anyone willingly turn on the Bullet Club. We've had people being kicked out of the Bullet Club, but I think ELP, because we are getting this gradual face turn. You know, He's been playing by the rules. You know, He was wishing Despy well after he lost to Despy in the, the block finals. He's been getting the, well, trying to generate some enthusiasm for cheering coming back. And he, I think, would be a prime candidate to actually leave Bullet Club and go and join another faction or start a new faction or whatever. But if he does that, then that is signifying the face turn is complete. So I think that might happen at some point. If we're going to pick one guy to be the first to willingly leave Bullet Club, I think it could be him. Yeah. I mean, if you know, if, if meaning becoming a heavyweight means we need to get him a new coat of paint, yeah. Um you know, you made a point where, you know, people, we need people to start leaving Bullet Club and we need to, we've had three people leave, right? 
G-O-D, um, and the Master Heater. Who else? Nobody else has left, right? Nobody else has been kicked out, right? And yet we've had, mm. it feels like, 10 people join, <laughs> right? Between Gallows, Anderson, uh, Alex Zane. Um, who else? Chris Bay? No, it was, it was, it was Ace Austin. Who Ace Austin. I'm sorry. I got to confuse my, my, my. Can we talk about that for right, a minute? Yes. Uh, so uh, he, he joined Bullet Club in the middle of this show. Uh, Johnny says, is it possible for New Japan to complete a tournament without making an obviously terrible decision like immediately turning Ace against Zayn? Mm. Louis said, people may not like it, but Ace Austin joining Bullet Club was for the best. Just watch the promo in the back he cut. This guy's a future star for the junior division. Uh, what are you guys' thoughts on Ace Austin? So I've got mixed feelings about this. I don't hate the idea of him being in Bullet Club because he's got that kind of swagger, you know, that sort of AJ Styles feel about him that I think makes him a good fit in that faction and they've got an eye for the future. I think the guy's a future star. I think we're going to see a lot of him in New Japan in years to come. I would have liked it if they'd drawn it out a bit more. As I said before, I wanted to see him and Alex Zane, the Zest friends, having a little tag run together, you know, winning Super Junior Tag League and winning the junior tag titles at Wrestle Kingdom, have a little run with them, then drop them and then maybe on, on a big match, you know, Sakura Genesis or something where they've dropped the belts, then in the ring have the big turn and him joining Bullet Club for maximum emotion and betrayal. And the way they did it, which was just in a backstage promo, no one watches the backstage promo apart from perverts and freaks like me. Uh, most people are going to miss that, which is a shame because I think it was a pairing that a lot of people got invested in. And I know that these guys have got prior commitments and I'm sure that Ace Austin joining Bullet Club at the final was penciled in from Jump Street. But I feel it's kind of emblematic of a problem New Japan have, which is not being able to be reactive to stuff. It's like, well, no, this is the plan. We've got to stick to it. And I feel that they should have called an audible here and, and tried to pull a few strings to drag it out a bit more. But in theory, Ace Austin in Bullet Club, I'm, I'm okay with it. I'm okay with it as well. Um, I'm lukewarm to it, only in the sense of it feels like it's, you know, North American pur- pur- purgatory, right? It's like... I mean, you're in a big faction and, and again, still a red hot faction. Um, uh, you know, as, as strange as that sounds to say, even now, but you know, you, you're kind of like a small, you know, small fish in a big pond. Is that what I'm looking for? Um, yeah, I would have liked to have seen him out on his own before doing anything like that. I, I will say this though, this is, or this was, a master class between both of those guys in getting people invested in them, getting people excited about them, thinking about the possibilities of them making a junior tag run and all this stuff. And they did it all via social media. Finally, you know how I always complain, Joe, about wrestlers and social media and how pointless and how useless and how just fucking idiots they are on social media. This was perfection. Every fucking picture was them enjoying a meal together, enjoying the culture, enjoying uh, new experiences, all this stuff. And again, even the match they had was like, oh, you know, we're going to go up against my buddy here. You know, it's going to be tough sledding, but I'm going for the win because, you know, that's what's most of All of it. The fans getting behind both of them. A master class in getting themselves over to the point where people gave a fuck and became invested in them and then had the big tr- the big trail. Yes, I agree with you. It shouldn't have been on a fucking, you know, backstage clip that, you know, only a handful of people really will see. But yeah, if you're going to do it, if you've got to do it on this show, do it in the ring at least. Just, you know, call that audible and say, all right, Alex, you know, head down ringside and let's do this in the ring where the fans are going to react to it. Right. I would agree a thousand percent. But but again, all of that, all that joy that we kind of got from that is them setting up the fact that we, we we need to get people invested in this turn. And and I think they they fucking did it to perfection. So my hat's off to them because um finally somebody did something smart, uh, a pro wrestler doing something smart on social media. Excellent job. Not only that, but they had to have spent all that time together, hanging out in Tokyo, eating meals together, knowing that this was coming. Yeah. With that sort of twinge of sadness. You know, when you're having a holiday romance 
and you just you know at the end of the holiday you've got to go back to your country she's got to go back to hers you, you probably won't see each other again and it's got that sort of inevitable sense of heartbreak to it it's, it sounds like, it sounds like it. you've watched Greece once or twice <laughs> 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 you think Olivia Newton John fan, are you? <laughs> Watch love it. I, I, I love that film. Yeah, you love right. I, watched it a, I watched it a lot when I was a kid. Yeah. What's I, his I'll name? tell you what, right? They, I was very I was very little when I watched it. It was my, mainly my big sister that I was watching it, so I was sort of watching it with her. Uh you know when Olivia Newton John undergoes a big change at the end. Sure, she's a bad back. girl. Right. I thought <laughs> as a child, I thought that was a different woman. <laughs> So I didn't understand the story at all. I was just like, oh, so he got he got rid of the first woman because she was not cool enough. And now he's just sort of shacked up with this new girl who's much cooler. Yeah. And it probably sent bad messages to me about the, the nature of relationships. But Maybe. You, you might be I was right. just like, who's this character who's come out of left field? That's a choice. In the black leather pants. <laughs> Singing a catchy tune. What was your favorite song from Greece? Um... It's the reproduction song. Was that Greece or Greece 2? I can't remember. <laughs> are you <laughs> You know when they're, are when you they're in the biology mind? like reproduction, du- reproduction. Reproduction. Yes. Yeah. Yes, I do know that That's one. That's the best song. Uh, that might be Greece 2. I don't my my wife swears Greece 2 is better than Greece 1. Uh, so so there's that. Uh, I'm a big fan of the Oh well, oh well, oh well. Oh, ooh, tell me more, tell, tell me, me more. more. Was it love at first sight? Tell me more, tell me more. Yeah. What a moment for two PJ class fans getting a duet. <laughs> yeah. Somebody else like that on yo. Christ. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, okay, so let's go. What do you think of the show overall? Can we can we get to uh to uh Yeah, okay, right. Just one little thing. Okay, no, so right. Kenta, he's he's medically cleared. So Kenta's back, he's ready to wrestle, which is exciting. I don't okay. know if we he I mean do we think the days of Kenta entering the G1 are behind him? Do you think he's sort of too physically shot for that? Or do we still think there's plenty of gas left in the tank for Mr. Kenta? Great question. I mean, is he a guy that's at the posi- uh, at a position where he's like, like the Suzuki position? <laughs> where he's like, fuck that, I'm not doing it this summer. <laughs> not this summer. Um, it, it feels like diminishing returns. I think you would get more bang for your buck with Kenta to just have him in high profile singles matches. Rather than putting that, in the grind of all these tours. Yeah, that, that fucking night five and night six. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're not getting the best Kenta you possibly can on those nights. Yeah, you're probably right. I would have I, 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 I would have no problem with him not sitting this one out. I would have no problem with it. Mm. But now, again, I, I know I'm, I'm – um, fuck. I feel like I'm, I'm setting myself up for a huge disappointment, Joel. Do you feel that way? Do you feel like you're setting yourself up for a huge disappointment with this fucking G1? Um, I'm trying to manage my expectations. I, I'm thinking of guys that I would be excited about seeing in it. I want El Fantasma in there. Okay. I want Fred Rosser in there. Okay. I think that would be a great story. Mm-hmm. I'll be really excited to see him uh, just, just for the narrative of him managing to get his career back on track. And I think he's been tremendous and strong. I'll be really excited to see him. Um, in terms of hoping for guys from other companies, it would be cool to see a T Hawk from Stronghearts from Glato. That would be nice. Um, I don't know if we're looking at other promotions like Noah or All Japan. There's been people, you know, whispering about Jake Lee or uh, what's his name, Nakajima. I don't know if that's going to happen. That's something to me that would be a, a pleasant surprise rather than something I've got my heart set on. And on, honestly, I'm not getting my heart set on having a you know guys like. Mox or Danielson or whatever, big AEW stars in the G1. I think we will likely get some sort of AEW representation, but I wouldn't hold your breath for, you know, someone like a, a Brian Danielson to, to be in the G1 Climax. I want I want El Fantasma, I want Fred Rosser. They're on the top of my shopping list at this point. Okay. I mean, I, I mean they're on my list too. Um, I, I would, I, I got to be honest with you, I would really need some, I, I, I just want some marquee names. And, and not to say that they're not marquee names. I'm saying, you know what, what I'm saying. Um, it's a long grind. It's a long summer. And, I, you know, you get it. But here's the thing, too. Like, every person, when this was first going down, was talking about, you know, they that they wanted to do it. You know what I mean? Like, every one of them was like, yeah, I would, I, I would love to do it. And blah, blah, blah. So, it kind of gives me a little bit of hope. <sighs> I don't know. I, f- I feel like I'm building this up in my head. And the realization of... 
you're going to get disappointed, dude, is kind of creeping into me here. Underdog Fantasy is the fastest growing fantasy app and easiest place to play fantasy sports. Just jump on underdogfantasy.com or download the app, draft your team, and that's it. And if drafts aren't your thing, they also have a pick'em game where you can win 20 times your money in a single night. Use promo code RADIO and Underdog will double your first deposit when you sign up with up to $100 in bonus cash. Deposit $100? Get $100 free. That's promo code RADIO. Terms and conditions apply. Waiting for this light to turn green. I'm headed to work for a boss so mean. I'm gonna be late. She's gonna be There are some things we should do alone, like sing in your car. If this light doesn't turn, I'm gonna scream. But when you gamble, you should always do it with others. Because gambling with friends helps keep things in check. So go to keepitfunohio.com for more tips like this. Keep it fun. Keep it social. But you're singing? Maybe keep that to yourself. I think the best they could do, actually, is a bit like the best of the Super Juniors lineup. Just have a few fresh names out of left fields, you know, maybe guys we haven't seen so much. And I just would like fresh names. Yes. I don't really, I don't necessarily need tippy top guys from other promotions, but just to mix it up a bit, because we've had the same, well, very similar names wrestle each other a lot for the past two, three years. And I think we just need to shake things up a bit. So, yes, uh, expect nothing <laughs> that you won't get disappointed. Yeah, I think cool. a lot of it, cheering as well if the cheering comes back then i think guys like danielson might be more likely to join but uh we'll wait and see uh let's talk about this best of super juniors final then which was hiromu takahashi defeating el desperado in 30 minutes 37 seconds with time bomb 2.5 hiromu takahashi wins best of super juniors 29 is that his third best of the super juniors win or his fourth I can't even keep up at this rate. He's won it so many times. Uh, Dagan says, do you think Desperado should have won the tournament? And is Hiromu winning every year starting to feel a bit repetitive? So, David, first of all, your thoughts on the match, please, and then thoughts on the booking. Match was very good. Uh, I thought it was, I thought the match was pretty outstanding, actually. I don't know if it was as good as other Hiromu Despi matches, um, but it was very good, and I think it was amplify because really there was nothing else in the show that would even come close to this match. Um, I, I think they took a safe path. I really do. Um, I think it, it could be the right call. I mean, you could argue it that, you know, Hiromu is your top guy, have him win. I, I, I feel like it, it was the safe of all, of all choices. It was the safest way to go. Does it feel stale? A little bit. I'm not gonna lie. It is a little bit stale. Um, like what else can the, the fucking guy do? I mean, he's obviously your top star in that in that division, but okay, well, now what else can he do? Like, like are we are we at a point where it's like, well, here's the thing. It, it, there is a feud to be made here. Right there, there is a feud that is right around the corner, and his name is Kushida. So, to me, that that still speaks to the most logical path we're taking here. Um, now, if that doesn't come to pass, then yeah, I'll be even more disappointed. Um, but to me, if this feels like him winning, Kushida, and maybe some redemption coming along the way. Yeah, I agree. I thought it was a fantastic match. It wasn't as good as the 2020 final, but nothing will be. I mean, that was an all-time great junior heavyweight match for me, so I wasn't necessarily going in expecting them to top that. But, I mean, definitely it was a match of the year caliber match. Uh, I was upset that Desperado lost. I thought this was a real chance to solidify him as the guy in the division. And, yeah, Hiromu feels a little bit directionless at the moment because... I am just taking this down. They're going to wrestle each other again in the future, sure. But I feel Desperado getting that big dominant win at Wrestle Kingdom and now Hiromu getting the win at Best of Super Juniors. I think we need to keep these guys apart from each other for a while. You know, maybe at some point we can build to Desperado finally getting his Best of the Super Juniors win because that, you know, that's the one thing that he hasn't won yet because he's won everything else, to be fair. I don't really see it like, oh, well, Despi lost, Despi in the muds. He's he's trash now because he's not. He's a, I think he's a mate guy in the junior division at least. So I can't really say that the result buried him. I just thought it wasn't particularly interesting. And I think interest is starting to waver a bit with Hiromu. So they've got to 
do something with him. I I like the idea of him being the never open weight guy who was sort of could wrestle heavyweights and juniors interchangeably for that belt, but that's not the direction they went with him. So I guess we'll wait and see. I mean, it does feel stale, and I was disappointed that Hiromu won, but we'll see you know, with Kashida coming back. Let's see what else they do with some of these best of the super juniors guys, because you know maybe if we get to see a guy like let's say El Lindemann getting signed by New Japan and, you know, they could build up him to be the next big rival for Hiromu and have him being the guy carrying the torch in the division. And I just think we need some fresh names in there on a more permanent basis to, if we do have Hiromu staying in the junior division, to keep things fresh and interesting. Do you feel like him not getting the win was a, was, again, maybe not a direct statement, but maybe a subtle statement of, Thanks, El Desperado, for getting us through this tough time, but our big boy's back. Yeah, and on a macro scale, looking at the booking of Dominion, it feels like they're saying to all the juniors, thanks, little guys, for right. holding the fort for a month. Now, take a step back. The big boys are here. So, yes, that and also extrapolating that to a larger point about the positioning of juniors in general. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, that it when when... when the match was over. Unfortunately, that's kind of what I was like. Wow. Thank. Yeah. As they say, it really was the pandemic champ. Yeah. 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 You know, as they say on Caddyshack, thanks for nothing. (laughs) (laughs) Oh man. Okay. So that was the best of super juniors final. Uh, Carol Ryzen says, it's the fact that Chris Bay isn't in best of super juniors, somewhat of a glaring omission. So, I had someone rolling into my DMs and so, so I don't, this is not a verifiable source or anything, but al- allegedly Chris Bay was offered the chance to work best of Super Juniors, but he said no because he didn't want he didn't wasn't interested in going to Japan. So take that for what you will. Is it, you know it's not a hugely credible source, but that information is out there if you want it. Um, he is still working strong. He worked the, the most recent episode of Strong, so you know it could just have, have been a case that they needed someone to team up with Jay White on impact right. rather than this big long-term thing for Chris Bay. I don't think he was a glaring omission. I mean, I think Ace Austin, arguably a, a better impact entrance. If you know, you've, you've had to make me choose between Chris Bay and Ace Austin, I would have picked Ace Austin. So I was happy with the, the lineup that we got. So I wouldn't say I was outraged or anything that Chris Bay wasn't there, but yeah, maybe he isn't the sort of anointed future uh, bullet club, Western bullet club star, <laughs> that we initially thought he might have been. So those are my thoughts on Chris Bay. Can I ask a question about your source? Was his name mm. Kikuchi? <laughs> <laughs> no, the official. <laughs> the official. Okay, now I feel better. Okay, about the source. Okay, good. Um, final thoughts on Best of the Super Juniors. Dave says, morning from the UK. Who was your breakout newcomer in Best of the Super Juniors? Which New Japan regular really surprised you most with their performances? For me, Wheeler Yuta was my standout newcomer. Doki stepped up a level in my eyes. Uh, I, as I said before, I think El Fantasmo, Robbie Eagles, really stepped up. If I was in charge, I would have called the audible and well, I said they're in the same block, weren't they? So we couldn't have done that. But yeah. um, I think just that was such a tremendous match. The the best match of the tournament by far, including the final, I think that Robbie Eagles against El Fantasma match. So I think those are the two guys who came away with their uh, stock increase the most uh, in terms of regulars and newcomers. Ace Austin was great. Alex Zane, just fantastic the way he got himself over with the fans. But if we're talking the whole package, El Lindemann really impressed me. I hope we get to see a lot more of him in New Japan because I think we are, the, the world's starting to run dry a bit in terms of, you know, who's going to be the next guy in the junior division should be El Lindemann. You've really loved him. You you were, you were, you're, you're on the bandwagon with him. That's for sure. Um, yeah. I mean, I honestly, I, it's hard for me to add any new thoughts or, 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 you know, interesting takes off of that because I agree with everything you said. Um, I think my MVPs were definitely Robbie, definitely ELP. I think Desperado was 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 in there, was in the mix um, for MVP. Um, I liked Wheeler Utah. I thought he did well. Um, but yeah, I, I'm kind of I'm kind of si- sliding right into your thoughts when it comes to this tournament. I thought it was good. Here's here's the problem that I had, and tell me if if you if you're on the same boat. It felt felt like it was building and building and building, and then at a certain point we plateaued and we stayed at that plateau and we never hit yes. that third gear. Yes, that's why we didn't record a show last week because one, it would have been recorded like the day of the final, and two, nothing really happened in those final three nights that 
gave us anything new to say that we didn't already say after the three Coroquin shows. That right. Coroquin triple triple whammy was great, and it peaked then. But then the the venue choices were weird for the final three nights. There was some good stuff in there, but nothing that I thought, oh, I've got some fresh takes for this and need to get them out there. So yeah, it did plateau a bit. So uh, it was a, a I thought a very entertaining tournament overall. Maybe felt a little bit short in terms of in ring. I thought we would have more matches to hang our hat on than just Despy, uh, not Despy, uh, El Fantasma against Robbie. But there was some good stuff in there. So I would say uh, a, a really fun tournament overall, but yeah, definitely sort of fizzled out a bit at the end. Letter grade? Uh, B plus. I would go solid, firm, unwavering B for me. There we go. That's best of the super junior. So let's move on to previewing Dominion, which is going to be taking place. Good morning, Esther. Aww. You wanted to come for the Dominion takes. This will be Sunday, June twelfth. Can you have a count on, 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 on air? <laughs> Esther, can you do counting? Counting? One? Two? Four? What comes after four? Four. She's not performing, Damon. Yeah, you know, it's early in the morning. Come on. I, I put her on the spot. Yeah, nice, five. Yeah, there you go. Show right. off. That's bad. <laughs> okay. So, uh, Dominion from Osaka Joe Hall. We are opening up here with Tenzan, Wato, and Taguchi against Aaron Hanari, Francesco, Akira, and TJP. This is a setup to uh, <laughs> a match we'll be having later on June the 20th in Korakuen Hall, where we will finally see Francesco, Akira, and TJP challenging Taguchi and Wato for the junior heavyweight tag title. Also, this is a preview match, a setup match for that. Then we have, now this is a choice. we got Hiromu, Naito, and Bushi against Ishimori, Ace Austin, and El Fantasmo. Second match of the card. So usually we would expect to see the junior, the, the winner of the best of the super juniors challenge for the junior heavyweight title at Dominion, pretty high up on the card. We won't be getting that this year. We've got this preview six-man tag, and then the actual challenge for the junior title will come June 21st at Korakuen Hall, where Hiroma will challenge Ishimori. Now, I understand the reasons behind that. I think at that time, a lot of their bigger names will be in the States. So maybe they felt they needed to hold that back to move tickets for these Korakuen shows and put that as a headliner, Hiroma versus Ishimori. But uh, we do have a lot of talk about this. A uh, friend of the show, guest host Lawrence, says, Hey, team, do you think having the junior title matches not on Dominion hurts the division? And Lawrence says, Is this the healthiest the junior division has felt in years? Did that play into them moving the junior championship matches to the Road 2 shows? And Trish says, What do you think of Hiromu Ishimori being on the Road 2 show rather than Dominion? I mean, maybe they're just kind of holding off just to give these guys a little bit more. Of a r- I don't know. I, I don't know. I, it, it kind of blew my mind. Like I don't have a great logical reason other than they they can headline a row two show with this title, which is admirable, I guess. But I I, I would think you could anyway. You know what I mean? Like I don't, I really don't think that's like a barometer of the the junior titles relevance at this point. I think it always could do that. <sighs> I don't know. Look, that's, I mean, to me, you think ELP gets a, gets another win? Uh, in what, in this six-man yeah. tag match? Yeah. yeah. That'll be interesting, actually. Let's have a, EL, let's go all in. Let's have ELP pinning Naito. Oh, now that would be something. Okay, that would be something. They, this company doesn't have the balls to do that, though, but that would be something. That'd be something. I, I, I just, I don't know. I, I, I like, I like everybody involved in this match. Mostly, I, it, this match just does not do anything for me. Nothing. She's, she's still going with the numbers, Damon. We've set her off now. Oh, <laughs> she's just looking at me, going 12, 60. So seemingly at random numbers, but uh, they are coming. So if you that hear numbers amazing. being shouted in the background, that's that's what it is. I love it. Uh, okay, so. Multiverse A says, what was the biggest disappointment of the past week or so? Despy losing, fans still not being allowed to cheer, Punk getting injured, Zest friends breaking up, or our next match to preview, Gallows versus Yano being placed on arguably the second biggest show of the year. 
what what is going on here? Why do we we don't have Hiromu versus Ishimori, but we do have Toriano against Doc Gallows? I mean, we touched on it before, but I hope I end up eating crow. I hope this turns out to be like the comedy match of the year, and I'm rolling around on the floor in hysterics, and this is an amazing comedy, but I don't think it will be. I think it looks a bit rubbish on paper. It looks fucking terrible on paper. <laughs> it really does. This is... It, it 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 could be frighteningly bad, like it could be. It could be. It could be. It could be. Dare I say, one of the worst matches. Like again, think about this on paper. This could be a potentially. We talk about potentially a lot in a positive. This could potentially be one of the worst matches we've seen in a long time. In a long time. I uh, I almost am excited to see it just to see how bad it's going to be. Um, morbid as it sounds. Uh, who thought this was a good idea? Who thought this was a good idea? <sighs> Again, you take a fucking two steps forward, you take one step back, or one step forward and three steps back. It just... I don't know what the fuck this company does sometimes. <laughs> this is one of those moments. And the booking of this is going to be such that by the time the House of Torture come rolling in for the next match, you are going to, you, they're going to be a breath of fresh air. You're going to be delighted to see Evil Show and Nudro coming out to defend their six-man titles against Katamaru, Zack Sabre Jr. and El Desperado. Now, I'm quite like, looking forward to this one. We, we've we established uh, the consensus is that House of Torture is good now. So these these six lads are going to go out there and have a, a fun, exciting match for the Never Openweight Six Man Championships. I think House of Torture will retain. They should retain because they're brilliant champions. It's been a good reign so far. I think people have slept on it, but it's been pretty fun. And I want to see them hold it until Strong Hearts can challenge them. So I'm picking House of Torture as my winners here. And Suzuki can always has like that energy with these six mans like they the, these usually turn out to be pretty fucking good um can i can i rewind just one second here and this is that yano gallows match correct me if i'm wrong it is not for the kowp championship right no shingo is the kowp yeah. holder so this is just a match right well maybe the winner of this is going to be a challenge for <laughs> kowp it's a kowp eliminator match holy fucking a like why would the why well, I like like this reminds me of like fucking indie shows in the nineties where guys would get on shows because they drove talent. You know, like Metal Maniac <laughs> would be on shows because he drove Jimmy Snooker. Like <clears throat> Doc Gallows is driving the car so so Carl Anderson could be on a fucking show. This this is this is what it feels like to me. Holy fuck. It's Metal Maniac. Metal Maniac, Doc no, Gallows. No, the match is gonna be like, it will be like four minutes long. I think uh, if it goes any longer than that, then I will be shot. Can we so, say, I'll we say an over, under five. You're saying under five. I say over five. Okay. I'm going to be optimistic for <laughs> once. Say under five. Uh, all right. Next, we have the IWGP Tag Championship match with the champions, Chase Owens and Bad Luck Farley defending against the challengers, Great O'Khan and Jeff Cobb. I hope Khan and the Cobb win. I really enjoyed them in the, the very short reign that they had, and I was shocked that they lost. I think they get the win back here. I think we we want to get the belts on them as travel starts to open up and we get some sexy challenges coming over from abroad. I think Khan on the Cobb are you, you guys. And they like traveling as well, so they can defend it abroad as well. Uh, they are, uh, I believe, going after the ROH Tag Championships, yeah. which are held by FTR. That seems to be a direction we're going. So maybe we have some sort of title versus title gimmick match coming up at Forbidden Door. But uh, yeah, I'm picking Khan on the Cobb to win this one. I would, you know, you, you're talking sexy today because that's, I, I would be into the title change, obviously, but imagine a little, nice little program with FTR. That I, I, I would dig that. How about you, man? I would fucking love that. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I, I like FTR. I don't think they're the sort of Southern wrestling throwback tag team that they initially presented themselves are. They are, they're, you know, US indie babyface high spots team. And I think... Once they started leaning into that and accepted that, then they've been a lot of fun to watch. So them against Khan and the Cobb, sign me up. I think that would be a really fun match for Forbidden Door. Yeah, yeah, that would be. All right, let's 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 hope for a title change there. All right. 
Then we have the big one, the AW Interim Championship Elimination Match. Hiroki Goto, Hiroshi Tanahashi. Michael says, is it now at long last time for Hiroki Goto to win the big one? Um, I'm saying, yes, please, I need it. Now, now look, I think Goto's an absolutely fine choice. I, I would have picked him myself in the same situation, so I've got no qualms with them sliding him in for this match. And I think Goto and Tanahashi have got really good chemistry. Historically, they've been really good together, so I think this is going to be a perfectly serviceable match. What is it? The sixth match on the, the show or something? One, Seven. two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, it's the sixth match on the show. So, you know, we're going to get a good sort of 15-minute I wouldn't say classic, but you know you can you can shut your eyes and imagine what this match looks like, and, and that's that's what it will be. I'm sure it will be really good. Um, Tanahashi's probably going to win, but I will be living and dying on every single Goto near fall. I just, oh, just I'm just closing my eyes and imagining him <laughs> like in Chicago, and I need it to happen, but it won't. Tanahashi's going to win, but I am I am Team Goto here. I mean, I feel like you almost have like you've you've played your cards and when i say you i mean new japan and aew with having tanahashi stroll out and challenge punk so it would really make no sense from a from a from a business standpoint i would think to change everything in that match like you still are going to have tanahashi be that guy and again if it's mox if it's whomever it winds up being um yeah there's no there's no reason to 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 disrupt this show more than it needs to. So again, I think the match will be good. Hiroki Goto is good. He's good. He's just what do you do with him at this point, right? But make no mistake about it. Him and Tanahashi in the same fucking ring is going to be really, really good. And yeah, I, I mean, I might bite for a near fall here and there. Oh, I might. But um, yeah, I think I, I think the odds are uh, we're going. We're going with Tanahashi. So next up, we have the KOPW 2022 championship match with Shingo Takagi against Taichi. We don't have any stipulations for that yet, but based on the previous match they had, I think these two guys are tremendous wrestlers. I think they've got really good chemistry, so I think we can look forward to having a really fun match with some creative stipulations. The backstage promos between the two of them have been extremely good content. They just they invade each other's promos and they just go back and forth yapping at each other uh and sort of trying to make each other laugh it's really really funny so i would recommend people going to check those out so until we have stipulations it's hard to really preview it but i think it'll be good and i honestly i hope taichi wins but i'll be perfectly happy with shingo retaining actually just as long as we are out of the yano comedy hellscape (laughs) I don't want to speak too soon because I dare yeah. say if he wins that Gallows match, he's going to have something to say about the outcome of this one. Um, but yeah, Hart says Taichi here. Okay. I mean, I truth be told, uh, it doesn't matter who wins this match to me. Um, I, I just know that the days of giving up, like, like hand waving a, a Taichi match are, are long in the, in the rear view mirror. I think this would be really good. Um, all things considered. Again, we don't have a stip yet, right? So we don't really know what we're getting ourselves into, but I think these two are are beyond great at this point. You know what I mean? Like those two guys can have a great match um, as long as they don't get handcuffed, but as some ridiculous fucking stipulation. But they seem to be pretty creative and pretty good with what they, the, you know, the limited amount of times that they had to play this game. So yeah, let's enjoy it while we can. Next up, we have the Never Openweight Championship match with Tamatonga, his first defense against the machine gun Carl Anderson. So I think Tamatonga, he's got to be in the G1 this year. He is getting a pretty sustained singles babyface push, and I think it's working. I think he's really over with the fans. I think his performances in these singles matches that he had have been very impressive. So I think he should keep the title in order to keep that momentum going, and then we can have him in the G1 as a Never Champion. And so my interest in this match is also to see what we've got with Carl Anderson, because as we said before, you know, when he knows the stakes are low, he he does tend to phone it in and you can't blame him. You know, he's a worker. He's been doing this a long time, but I think he's going to have his working shoes on here. He's going to want to make a good first impression. This is a big match for him. I think arguably one of the biggest matches he's had in recent history. So I think he's going to have a point to prove. I think these two guys are going to go out there you know, 15 minutes, I think this could impress a lot of people. I think it'll be good. I think it's just the opposite in the sense of 
I think it can. Don't. don't uh, I, I think it can be good. I think, it, and I think it will be good. Um, so I agree. Agree with you there. But I really feel like this is a title change. Like I really do, because if you think about this way, you know what obligations does Carl Anderson have? Like he seems like he can roam wherever he needs to go, um, whenever he needs to go. I would not be surprised to see him in G one. Um, I think Tama Tonga too. I don't. I don't. I don't see. I don't see the reason why either of them couldn't be in. Um, but I, I'm telling you, I, I really feel like this is a title change waiting to happen. Yeah, it wouldn't shock me actually. I mean, if they're trying to get over this Bullet Club dominant storyline, then that would be the direction to go. Uh, let's move on to the IWGP United States Heavyweight Championship three way match with. Juice Robinson defending against Sanada and Will Ospreay. There's a, a, a litany of injuries and injury recoveries. So Sanada's just come back from his injury. Uh, Juice Robinson apparently has appendicitis. No. Uh, Will Ospreay, he had a kidney infection, didn't he? So if we actually get all three of these guys in the ring <laughs> when the match begins, then I would be shocked, actually, because I'm sort of half expecting one or more of these guys to pull out just based on uh, what Shane's question here. Why is the US title cursed? Samuel says, is it time to pull the trigger on interim US title? It seems not. I mean, if Juice Robinson's healthy and good to go, then great. Um, if this is the match that we get, could be a lot of fun. I mean, Juice and Osprey, they've, they've worked matches like this before. They know how Charlie, to do... Yeah. Yeah, entertaining uh, multi-person matches. They've done three-way, four-ways in the past, so should be a lot of fun. Uh, who do I think is going to win? This one's very hard to call. Um, I would be reluctant to take the title off Juice Robinson so early into his run. Same as Tamatonga, really. This is their first defence. I would like a little bit of stability, so I would like to see Juice Robinson rock hard. Juice Robinson, to give him his full moniker, uh, Juice Robinson to retain. Yeah, if I stay with my usual titles changing hands on a show, I doubt they would, they would do back-to-backs. So if I'm sticking with my prediction of Carl, then I'm sticking with my prediction of Juice holding on to it as well, um, which I think makes the most sense. He's he's a guy that you would think would love to spend some time in the United States, right? Um, so... That being a huge factor, why not let him hold on to that belt and do a little bit more activities here in the States? Hmm, just thinking of potential matches for Juice at Forbidden Door if he wants to defend that title. Like, I feel versus... like that's a perfect AEW spot, don't you? Yeah. Juice like, versus Hangman Page, that would be fun. Have that, I would have no problem with that. I would have no problem with a lot. How about, would you? would you have a problem with Adam Cole? <laughs> I've always got a problem with Adam I Cole. <laughs> I know you do. Yeah, it will be fine. I mean, what I what I don't want is Adam Cole in these epic hand staring main events, all, all that nonsense. I think Adam Cole in a nice tidy little twelve minute mid card match, fine. I'm okay with that. Can I? Can I? I'm going to propose a couple. How about Juice Robinson, Danhausen. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take that over out of call. <laughs> Me too. I love Dan Halson, actually. Yeah, he's quite funny. I think I find him to be hilarious. I love the Dan Halson. All right, I'll throw one more name at you, just for shits and giggles. Juice Robinson versus Samoa Joe. Oh, yeah, I like that. Is it Samoa Joe? Is he? He's not in some tournament. Listen, no, he didn't. He lost it, didn't he? That's right. Yeah, yeah he was in the, the Owen Hart, Owen Hart thing. Yeah, yeah. I, honestly, you can start Juice. Juice Robinson against any of these, any anyone in AW, and I think we're going to have a really good match because they've got a, a loaded roster over there. So, yeah, it will be nice to see him in action at Forbidden Door if he retains. Oh. Um, let's move on to the main event then, which is the IWGP World Heavyweight. Oh, actually, no, I was going to pick your brains actually before we do that. What yeah. do you feel about interim titles? Uh, honestly, I think it's – I hate it. <laughs> I really don't like it. Hmm. Uh, um, I, I just – I like – we're making up rules as we go along, it feels like. You know what I mean? Like, we're just trying to fucking shoehorn this to make sense. But in every other scenario, and again, a lot of times it's different promotions and everybody's got their own set of fucking rules. But, you know, you can't defend the title. How many times have we seen, okay, the title is held up and the winner of the match gets the fucking title? I mean, we just saw the goddamn thing in Washington. Um, I don't know. I think it's silly. I really do. Just just make them the champion. 
Why why would you not just make them the champion? Punk can't defend. And now we have a, a match for a, a, new, a new champion. It's not that big of a deal. You can That person can drop that fucking title as soon as Punk gets the bill of health. Clean bill of health. It's not a big deal. It's not a big deal. What, what, I don't know why we would need. What, I, it sounds like you're on the other in, in the other camp. No, no, I'm not. I, I know why they happen. Just because promoters like the idea of having the real champion against the you know interim champion <sighs> kind of the, you know the unification gimmick match. I don't think it's necessary. I think it sort of muddies the waters in terms of title lineages. I don't get as upset about it as other people do, but it just it feels kind of messy to me. So I'd rather not have interim titles, and I'm glad that uh, New Japan don't. Yeah. Even though Osprey was running around with a fake belt, at least that was clearly signified as "Look at this heel with his fake belt; he's not the real champion." So, right, exactly. There's that. I thought that was done pretty well. Uh, main event. Then we got the IWGP World Heavyweight Championship because it's got Okada, his sixth, sixth, no fifth defense against the challenger Jay White. I would not be surprised to see the title change here mm. if they are going all in on this Bullet Club feud. Jay White says that at the end of the show, he's going to reveal his grand design or whatever it is for Bullet Club. So I think something is going to go down. I don't know what it is, but whilst I'm sort of leaning sort of 60% Okada retaining, I would not be shocked at all if Jay White comes away with a belt. How are you feeling? It's kind of hard to have a master plane be, be revealed and be the loser of a match, right? Isn't it? Uh yeah, one of surprise me. And then, and then, sorry, of course, you can have uh, Jay White against Adam Cole in your in your go. hellish uh, IWGP title defense at Forbidden Door. I'll be like, Cheryl? Oh, guess what? Cheryl's going to go to Chicago. Um, I'll be like, Cheryl, my Sunday night just opened up. <laughs> book, book, let's go to the best steakhouse in town. Um, yeah, you, you know what? I hate to say it. Because I think this title run has been very underrated. I think he's been excellent. And he feels like just the the guy in the promotion. I would not be surprised to see a title change here as well. I was quite shocked you said that, actually. Why? Because I just think that a lot of people have got their hearts set on Okada going into Forbidden Door. You know, he is the representative of New Japan Pro Wrestling. Nice, shiny, golden Okada with the shiny golden belt. He is the guy. He's going to have, you know, Okada Danielson or, or whatever. But I just, yeah, I just think that's all going to get mucked up. But by, here's uh, the thing with that, club. though. Like, if he drops the title, he is, it's it's more flexible. Like, you can have higher profile matches because you're not worried about, oh, well, this guy can't do shit because he's lost, the, you know, he doesn't have a fucking, he has the title, you know? We can't have him be involved in whatever we're going to stick on in a multi-man. Th- and that's not to say that that won't still happen, but I just think that like, it just opens up a lot more. And then you have an even, you know, higher profile Jay white match against somebody for a title, which again, I think that's the, that's the smart move to go. Don't you? Yeah. I think Jay white needs this win more than Okada needs to retain. I agree. I agree. And I, 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 no one in that building is going to be like, Oh, he, Okada doesn't have a, a, the title, so now uh, everybody run to the you know the, to the bathrooms and go get a beer. It's intermission. No, that's not the case. You know what I mean? Like you know you're going to fucking get greatness. So I don't, I don't, I don't think the belt is is as important. And again, it opens up a lot of possibilities with Jay White as your champion once again, b- selling out now the United Center. <laughs> you know he's got he's got two American buildings that he's that'll have on his resume. Uh, yeah, I think. Uh, I think that could be the case. Um, yeah, I think we're, I, I, I'm, I'm leaning heavily toward our title change. Okay, well, that is our preview for Dominion. I will just give my thoughts on two episodes of Strong because we didn't manage to talk Strong because we didn't record last week. Uh, first thing I just want to say about Strong, Ian Riccoboni is so good. He yes. almost makes Alex Kozlov tolerable. So well done, Ian. Keep up the good work. Uh, so this is the Saturday, May 28th show. This is a Mutiny. So we started off with Bateman, Mysterioso, Barrett Brown. Uh, defeating Fred J. High, DKC, and Kevin Knight. I really enjoyed the DKC versus Barrett Brown segment of this match. Two guys who I think could be future best of the Super Juniors guys. Uh, speaking of future best of the Super Juniors guys, David Finley defeating Blake Christian. 10 minutes, 7 seconds with the Trash Panda. Um, Blake Christian is on an upward trajectory. 
He's a lot of fun to watch. He is a guy I think should be in next year's best of the Super Juniors or in contention at least. Finley, he needs to do something. He's He's got more of an edge with this persona he's doing at the moment. He's got the shillelagh and sort of threatening to attack, but he didn't actually and he's shaking hands at the end. But he's got to do something. You can't really have him join Bullet Club as well. I think you've got to do something different with him. But if he doesn't get a fresh coat of paint soon, then he's just going to get even he's just going to become invisible basically uh main event we had jeff cobb mark davis and carl fletcher defeating bad dude tito jonah and shane haste and just watching this first of all carl fletcher he reminds me a lot of the young will osprey as he's getting sort mm. of more muscular and, and filling his body out definitely getting big osprey vibes from him and i'm just thinking ahead aussie open versus tmdk when we do eventually get that as a tag match put that in front of a hot crowd in a big spot would be really good. Maybe do that in the UK. Maybe even do that in Australia. Have that as a you know sort of semi main event or something for the the tag titles. I think that'd be big money. And Jonah versus Cobb should be a lot of fun when we eventually get to that. Um, I'm not really sure what the ceiling is. Could you have Jonah versus Cobb main eventing a mid level show? Possibly. I mean, the fans seem really into it. So uh, watch this space as far as when that singles match is announced because I think it's going to be sooner rather than later. And then in the most recent episode, we had Kita and Yuya Uemura defeating Kevin Blackwood and Lucas Riley. Kevin Blackwood and Lucas Riley teasing some uh, dissension at the end there. It looks like Kevin Blackwood blamed Lucas Riley for the defeat. So maybe we, we might be seeing a bit more of a, a heelish Kevin Blackwood. And I've enjoyed the work he's done so far. I think he's a, a useful guy to stick around on strong. But big takeaway from this match, Yuya Uemura just came across looking like the biggest star of the match. The fans loved him. And he got the, the winning four here. So... That's not for nothing. I think Yuya is going to have a very productive excursion in the States. Then we had uh, Bullet Club, Chris Bay and El Fantasmo defeating Alex Zane and Christopher Daniels. So again, we're, we're seeing more Chris Bay here. I don't think he's going anywhere. Uh, he might just be the guy that you know Bullet Club guys can tag with when they're over in the States or when they're in Impact. Uh, but it uh, looks like he's not going to be going to Japan anytime soon. Um, and it was nice to see Alex Zane here. So obviously this would have been recorded before the best of the super juniors but they did go out of their way and christopher daniels went out of his way to to talk up alex zane and so i think he's a guy who should be featured quite prominently on strong when he's back in the states if that is the direction they're going in and then in the main event we had tomohiro ishii defeating the debuting big demo the artist formerly known as killian dane when he was in nxt uh, this this was a good match. I mean, if you again, this is one of those matches where you close your eyes, you can imagine what it's like, and it was like that. Just you know, two big lads hitting each other really hard. Uh, big Damon has got a, a very fun range of uh, flying kicks and drop kicks and stuff, which are quite good to watch. But he's going to have his work cut out for him to make a spot for himself because there are other guys who do what he does arguably better than him. I mean, I'm thinking of people like Jeff Cobb and Jonah. We already uh, have uh, J.R. Kratos even. Um, We've got big lads on this roster, right. so he's going to have to do a lot to make himself stand out. And I mean, certainly you kick the tiles on him and see what you've got. But th- this is, you know, the, the cream is going to rise to the crop here. I think it's great that we've got such a, I, I think it's a pretty stacked strong roster because people are going to have to work their socks off and get themselves over with the fans in order to to, to get featured prominently and to get uh, future bookings, future appearances on Strong, or even get a contract at the end of it. And I think that competition can only be a good thing. So those are my thoughts on New Japan Strong. I definitely agree with that. Um, that the next time we do a New Japan Strong, I'll, I'll, can I be Brian Alvarez and just be like, all right, Joel, New Japan Strong. Take it away. <laughs> <laughs> no, I appreciate I'm still one of the few people watching it, which is fine. You know, people listen to this podcast because they, you know, they maybe don't have time to watch it. So they're getting the, the little strong digest there. And I'm happy to do it because it's an easy watch every week. Uh, and if there is something that I think people should go out of their way to watch, I will say. And I'll text you as well. So, Damon, you've got to watch this. And uh, I'm usually right. Yeah. And I think I've got a pretty good eye for talent at this point. Usually, I think I'm ahead of the curve when it comes to, you know, young talent debuting on Strong. And I'll say, you know, keep an eye out for this guy. And they usually turn out to, to be successful. Like, I remember... I was going to say Wheeler Yuta when he first appeared on Strong. I mean, it's not like he was a particular unknown or something, but I knew that he, he was very talented and New Japan would likely be keen on him. And, and there we are two years later, he's in best of the Super Juniors. So go, Joel. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think we're both pretty good at that. Like there was this one time where I was like, you know, that Hiroshi Tanahashi, he might be something. <laughs> <laughs> he, might be, he, might, he might do something in this promotion. I don't know. All right. So that is the end of the podcast. Uh, Redcircle.com forward slash shows forward slash super dash J dash cast. If you want to give some money to us, that is always appreciated. Discord link you can get by sending me a direct message on Twitter. 
at Cobra Kawaii and ProWrestlingTees.com forward slash SuperJCast if you want to buy one of our lovely t-shirts. Big thank you to Editor Dan. Find him on Twitter at LousyHero219. Uh, check out the new song, Soul Ties, uh, from Escape the Box. It's a great one. I'm enjoying that one a lot. Subscribe to the Voices of Wrestling Podcast Network for other great shows. Give us a five snake review, some kind words on iTunes to help us move up those rankings. Follow us on Twitter at SuperJCast. Thank you, everybody, for listening, and goodbye. Waiting for this light to turn green. I'm headed to work for a boss so mean. I'm gonna be late. She's gonna be. There are some things we should do alone, like sing in your car. If this light doesn't turn, I'm gonna scream. But when you gamble, you should always do it with others. Because gambling with friends helps keep things in check. So go to keepitfunohio.com for more tips like this. Keep it fun, keep it social, but your singing? Maybe keep that to yourself. Introducing Under Armour's Infinity High Sports Bra. Its ergonomic design is molded to support the natural movement of your body. With cord-out padding, the better breathability eliminates extra bulk without sacrificing support. And quick-dry padding is Under Armour's fastest drying padding yet. When you're lifting heavy, running fast, and pushing yourself further than ever before, you need a bra that will help you go that extra mile and make you feel your best. Shop the Infinity High Sports Bra now at UA.com.